What is up crew, it's your boy KSM and on today's video I'm going to be going over how to practice drawing hair the easiest way you could do it and we're going to be going over stuff like the simple shapes, silhouette, as well as getting in those nice juicy textures to make some nice hair design. Now if it's your first time here, welcome into the KSM crew. My name is KSM and I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design and I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. So if you guys are interested in some free art and uh, education or you're just looking to hang out with my dog who is asleep over there, make sure to leave a follow uh, on Twitch and like and subscribe the video if you're watching from YouTube. Um, but yes, we're going to be starting off here with drawing the hair. And uh, again, I want to remind you guys that I will be skipping past how to draw the head. So if you guys want to learn like, hey, Sam, hey, how do you draw the head and all that stuff? I cover that in a lot of other videos on my YouTube channel. So we're going to be skipping past that today. We're going to be jumping right into drawing hair. Um, and so I kind of already drew out here kind of a rough face for this guy. Not really focused on the face today, but I wanted to give us a little something at least to look at, you know, build a base for this man here. So let me let me go ahead and just kind of add an eye in here, a little bit of a, a little pupil, you know, and then we'll we'll get this one started. Uh, but yeah, out of curiosity, for those of you watching live, how many of you guys here have ever struggled with drawing hair? Put an F in the chat if you were like, Kasem, man, oh man, I had some crazy ideas for hair, but the moment I tried them, they did not look the way that I thought they would look. Put an F in the chat. Let's go ahead and see here how many of you uh, out here struggling with drawing hair. Because if you are, um, hopefully today's stream will, will kind of make it a little bit easier um, to digest and understand what's going on here with uh, with hairstyles and stuff. All right. So um, speaking of hairstyles, the first thing that I always want to call out when it comes to drawing hair is got to be the hairline. Man, oh man, the hairline is such a key indicator, I think, for being able to determine um, the structure of hair and the structure of the head and i feel like if you can understand how the hairline works um you're pretty much on your way to go to doing i would say about 50 percent of the battle because here's the thing the hairline actually it frames the hair in relation to the head so if you can have a good hairline right here like what kind of we're establishing right now this will kind of already get you started and say okay this section of the head is going to be for the hairline and we're going to be using that to establish some flow and stuff for um for this character that we have here right so i'm going to kind of bring his i'm going to kind of bring his hairline back here he has a bit of a fade right here on his hair on his hairstyle so um that's going to be an interesting approach here that we're going to have to try to tackle but for the most part this is going to be like his you know his hairline shape here nothing too insane i would say right kind of a simple structure okay uh also thank you for the follows uh cactus juice and drop everyone here dropping all the f's i know i know the it's tough it's tough to draw hair um maybe even after you watch this stream you'll still find it uh tough but we'll hopefully cover it and and make it more accessible to, to be able to do but all right remember step number one draw the hairline nice and easy nothing too complicated there right um here's a few cool tips and tricks for drawing the hair by the way or drawing the hairline you want to watch out for things like these parallel lines right here you see that Parallel lines are going to be super key. So let me actually, I'm going to put this model away and let's, let's go ahead and like duplicate. I want to kind of duplicate this real quick. So just to kind of show you guys here, um, tips about the hairline here. All right. So let me flatten this image. So when it comes to drawing the hairline, sometimes having in like these kind of rhythms like for example parallel lines across the brow and the side plane right here of the hairline can be very helpful um this area right here of the upper portion of the hairline can vary a lot you can obviously have it you know you can have it recede this way to be like more like a widow's peak so you can have it kind of taper here like that um you can do let me kind of erase this a little bit more um so you can do kind of like, you know, kind of like this for a widow's peak. You can do something that goes further back for a, you know, more receding hairline. You know, so you can do a lot here with the hair to give it different characteristics. And you can actually utilize the hairline as well to be able to establish more of a, 
uh, what's the word here? Different types of shape design and shape aesthetics for your character. Because let's say you have a more friendly character, you can actually give them, let's say, maybe a rounder hairline, right? Something like this that's a little bit more softened out. So they they might appear more friendly uh, than someone who has maybe more of a sharper sharper hairline right there. So think about it that way too, right? So like shape design, shape language can also go a long way here uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to using the hairline. So everything, every single part of the hair, I feel like can be, can be used. So you can imagine here, I'm just gonna do it in different colors, right? So you have like the sharper angle here. Uh, maybe you have here this a green angle like so. Uh, and then maybe you have like this maybe purple. I'll make it purple. So it's like a different color, right? So different hairstyles, different, different, uh, hair, uh, hair, hair, uh, hair lines you know, can also play a big role there. So there you go. So let me, let me go ahead and kind of highlight some of that. So you have here, you know, the triangular sharpness, right? You have here more of a square boxy look and we don't really talk too much about shape language yet on my streams, but it'll definitely be a big part of our streams, um, moving forward with the boot camp as we move away from specific anatomy techniques and more for, uh, more for general character design, uh, tips and tricks, by the way. Um, and then this one's going to be a circle. All right, let me see this. There you go. Um, but yo, Hey, thanks for the follows golden heavens and also Leela Manton. Welcome in guys. I'd love to know how you guys came across my stream today. And what is this? What do you call several rabbits in a row walking backwards? A receding hairline. Nah, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you. That's a good one. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Also, um, Liz, how's it going, Liz? Welcome back in. Okay, um, but now let's kind of go back in here, guys, um, and let's go out and now draw the next couple of components here of the of the hairstyle, right? So we've got the hairline here. Now the next thing that I like to do when it comes to drawing out hair um, is going to be establishing here the overall silhouette and structure of the hairstyle. Right. So I'm going to kind of go here and just kind of establish a little bit of the volume. Right. So I know that I want the hair to kind of go this way. Uh, maybe I want the volume of the hair to kind of go this way. Right. And I'm going to be establishing again, just some general kind of volumes, not really committing to any particular lines just yet. We'll be doing that a little bit. Um, we'll be doing that in a bit. I just want to make sure that we you know, we capture some of the general forms here before we go in and actually kind of uh, go a little crazy here on the details, right? So again, nice and simple shapes. We're going to build up from these and then it'll hopefully look solid. Um, oh, thanks for the follows too, Captain John and also Kiro Pixel. But yeah, I, I would genuinely love to know for those of you guys who are coming in here right now, how you guys came across my stream today. Did you find me on recommended? Was it through my YouTube channel? Uh, was it possibly through the front page? I'd love to know. Let me know. Uh, let me know what's bringing these new new viewers out to my streams. Um, but you can kind of see here, I'm going back to the hairstyle right now. Um, I'm mostly I'm mostly just out here uh, establishing some of that silhouette shape, right? Looking at some of the major large shapes here that we're working with. And I'm not going to try to add too much detail in here. Um, if anything, I'm actually trying to keep it nice and simple with the shape design here. So kind of just triangles here and there, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, I think for this character, he's definitely given me a more triangular motif. And so I'm going to be utilizing more triangular shapes as I, you know, start working on uh, this design a little bit more. Now I'm going to move his hair around a little bit here. So this is kind of the early stage where you can really go crazy with the hair um, and not worry too much about, about it getting messed up or anything like that. Right. But we're going to just kind of move in, move the hair around. And I think this will be good now for starting off into a more detailed approach. Now, um, also, I want to remind you guys that um, we are going to be speed running a little bit here because there are a lot of different hairstyles I want to cover today. So if I'm if I am going a little fast, do let me know in the chat. I can try to slow down, but I'm going to try to speed up this these early steps first and these kind of early demos, so that way we can actually get into drawing out um, drawing out the the different types of hairstyles that I've that I've uh, gathered for you guys today. And um, hey, welcome in blue, blue, um, blue plays horror. Yeah, for those of you curious, by the way, um, I am sponsored by Skillshare this month. And if you guys are interested in a free month of Skillshare, um, I would 
I'll, I'll actually pin it for you guys. Um, but if you guys are interested in a free month of Skillshare, you guys can actually click that link over there. Take a look. Um, we've done a few demos with Skillshare already, so some of you might know. Uh, but if you haven't, um, yeah, Skillshare is a super cool online platform and they got all that cool stuff there. Uh, but even again, I always tell people, even if you're not interested in um, getting Skillshare, clicking on that link alone actually helps me out tremendously. Um, yeah, but thank you for the follow as well to King Carrot. Everyone's being super studious. <laughs> uh, I've been keeping my tabs on you and I really like what I see. Ah, oh, thank you, Frost, Frosty Boy. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, we've been, uh, we've been putting a lot of work in, guys, um, both on and off stream out here. So I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the stream so far. But um, let's go in here and let's talk a little bit now about some of the details that I'm seeing, right? So here, I think at this step, once we've kind of drawn out some of the simple structure, this is where I'm going to go in now and try to find some small, medium, large shapes that I think could work really well for this design. So maybe here first, I'm going to go kind of break up this large kind of lumpy section of hair. And I'm just going to go find a large, maybe like this, uh, and maybe another kind of like a, maybe like a medium shape like this. So I might actually make this one a little bit bigger, you know, just to give it some more volume there. But again, small, medium, large shape. So this is kind of where the design element of drawing hair really comes in because I feel like, um, honestly, hair, once you kind of draw out the, the basic structure, everything else is all about your own stylistic choices of how you want to convey different shape design, how you want to convey different overlaps of folds how much detail you actually want to put in when you want to texturize your hair. Um, so this is a step that I like to do to kind of help make some some sense out of all of it. And that's actually the step that I do for a lot of my hairstyles that you'll see here that we've drawn um, on my stream, right? So these are, these are characters that I've drawn uh, from The Last of Us. And so I talk a little bit about how to get something like this with all the little details and stuff. I usually start off with basic uh, basic shapes, you know, like the ones that we're seeing here. But uh, I'm going to go in now and let's actually kind of throw in a few more shapes that I think could be interesting here. So maybe I'll maybe I'll throw in like one more here like this just to kind of break up a little bit of the, the structure there. Maybe we'll add a little bit of hair right here or something like that. Um, and again, large shapes, but I'm choosing shapes that are interesting in terms of me small, medium, large. So you can actually kind of see uh, right here. Notice how we had a large shape here. Now we have a medium and a small shape here, but going across this way, we also have a small, medium, large shape here too, right? So I'm utilizing kind of this idea of shape design across the board, not just in the individual strands that we're seeing. Um, but yeah, let's try to make some sense here of what's going on with this hairstyle. I think this guy's got a, you know, a pretty crazy, messy hairstyle. And so I always tell people like, you don't have to copy the reference exactly. I think take take what you like about the hairstyle or take or take what you like about the reference and then pick and choose kind of the things that you want to exaggerate or 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 include in your own illustrations so in this case right here i'm not really a fan of how his hair kind of gets a little messy around this portion so what i'll probably do is i'm going to simplify that out so i'm just going to kind of give him give him a little bit of like a triangular shape here to kind of showcase that it's overlapping uh, on top of his his hair on the side, but other than that, I might I might actually not include the the rest of the the hairstyle there. On that on that right section, so I mean we can we can do it. Um, it would just look something like this, and so he would have kind of a few overlaps here that that would look like that. And uh, hey, Clemico, welcome in. Uh, but yeah, by the way, guys, if you have any questions or you want to ask me anything, please feel free to ask. Um, again, I always want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm here to, to ask, to answer any questions that you guys might have as well. I'm not just here to like draw and stuff because I don't know, I, I, I do that already enough for work and stuff. So, uh, when I'm out here live, I'm always trying to, you know, answer as many questions as I can and help you guys out. If there's anything you might be, uh, curious about or wondering, is that David Beckman's brother? Honestly, <laughs> Honestly, yeah, maybe like a younger brother, huh? He's giving me, he is definitely giving me some uh, David Beckman vibes for sure. Um, if you were to do the messier part of the hair, how would you recommend that part um, in shading or color? Um, kind of what we're doing now. So it's not going to be any different, but again, notice what I'm doing is I'm overlapping forms. I'm overlapping kind of these like flat triangular shapes on top of each other. And so as you start doing that, 
Areas like this, for example, are going to be shaded underneath. Areas underneath this triangle are also going to be shaded, right? Um, and so you're going to start kind of building up the shading and form that way. Um, but again, I'm not, we're not there yet. So patience, patience, young Padawan on the shading. But that is kind of how I would approach it, right? Thinking about the, the individual layers and stuff. Um, and thank you, Clemico. Appreciate the kind words today. No, no, you're good. <laughs> yeah, my fault. You're like, I got to, I saw the future. I wanted to know right away. But yes, we will get to um, doing some maybe shading for at least one of these demos, if not all of them today. I want to try. I want to try to do some for all of them. Um, am I going to be doing any critiques today? Yes. So critiques will be happening at the end of the stream, guys. So have a little patience on that one. We'll be doing that in the last uh, 20 minutes of my stream. Um, we got a lot of things scheduled today. Um, I've been super busy. Streams have been pretty insane and work has been pretty insane, but we will be doing critiques today. They're going to be happening at the end. I like the idea of, uh, to shape the hair in larger shapes. Yeah. So this is, uh, honestly, this is, this is not a new idea. This is actually something that I think a lot of, you'll see this a lot in different techniques, whether it's character design or even landscapes or drawing environments for those of you who are, um, environment artists and stuff. We, we, uh, we even do some of that too, right? So if you want to draw a background, you start off with large, basic shapes, small, medium, large, and then you kind of slowly, um, slowly start adding in details to your illustration. And I think that's actually kind of a really cool way to start building up, um, these type of compositions. So small, medium, large, this technique of larger shapes to smaller details is um honestly now that i think about it it's not even limited to art it's actually um something that you can also apply in other aspects too like for example software engineering if you guys didn't know i used to be a software engineer and even in software engineering there's this idea of starting with a basic kind of fundamental core structure for your program and then working on adding in the details kind of branching out so i think overall it's just a good strategy to apply in a lot of approaches um, you know, start off with the, with the, with the overarching idea and then jump into the details. So, um, you can apply that with art too, because let's be real. I've, I've been there. I've been there where, you know, I wanted to draw some crazy details, uh, for my characters. Like how many of you guys in the chat were like, oh man, I, I got to draw hair. And the first thing you did was like, all right, let me go. Let me add all this. Let me add some, let me add some hair here. Let me do all this. Let me add all this right here. Right. And you're like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, zoom, you're like zoomed in like this. And then when you zoom out, you're like, Oh, yo, what it, what is this? You know what I'm saying? Put an F in the chat. If you've ever done that when trying to draw hair, right? You're so, you want to taste the forbidden fruit of details. But when you look at it and you're like, huh, it's losing a lot of the structure. It's not really making sense. And then what makes it more difficult is when you want to try to draw the same character, but now you want to draw from a different angle. You're like, ah, oh, shoot, what the heck's going on? Right? So you went like, you're like, okay, let me try to draw from like facing this way now or looking straight ahead. And now you don't really know because you jumped into the details, uh, before focusing on the other stuff. Right? So there's definitely some, some benefits here of starting off with basic shapes first. Um, but thank you so much everyone for the follows. Whoa. Wait a minute. Okay. I'm a little suspicious here. Um, are you going to be looking at the R from last time or do I repost? I would say to repost. I'm going to try to choose ones who are here live today because I don't want to, I don't want to do an art roast for people who are not watching live. So if you're watching live, repost it again. Um, and I will try to pick them out. Um, and thank you for the follows ramen and blue food matcha. Are these is it a food themed, uh, ramen and blue food, matcha, espresso, uh, kitsunu, Chili, uh, Cayenne. We also got Draxon, uh, Wise Panther, Anime Nerd 2009, and uh, Suze as well. <laughs> what are all these like food related follows? Thank you guys. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do appreciate all the follows out here, and I hope that you guys are enjoying the stream so far out here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, again, I'm going to change a few things here because even though he has some hair covering here, um, I don't want to cover it too much. And so I actually want to kind of give him his brows back just a little bit here and then we'll kind of piece out the rest of the, the components here. But overall, I would say this is going to be that secondary step, right? So we're not doing too much. I would say, uh, we just added in, we kind of broke up the, the details that we had earlier. And then now we're going to go in on the final step, I would say. And this final step is really where we're going to be seeing some of the actual texture um, coming in here for the hairstyle. 
I'll keep it like that for now. We'll see how we'll see if we if we keep a lot of these. But again, before here's the first step: go in hairline, basic uh, structure, adding in here the simplified shapes, and then now we're gonna go in and actually start adding in texture to the hair. All right. Um, yo, how's it going, Shadow Wolf? And yeah, and everybody else who's here right now, yeah, feel free to grab a beanie, Sus. And really quick, guys, for those of you watching live, I do run ads on my stream um, every hour. One's going to be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. They do help keep my streams monetarily viable um, and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. So uh, appreciate that. And uh, don't worry. Also, I'm not. There's not going to be any secrets or anything revealed during the ad break, so you're not. You guys are not going to be missing out on anything. All right, just uh, just a heads up for those of you who are like, "Hey, Sam, but wait, aren't you going to be teaching stuff?" Nah, don't worry. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to be covering anything particularly. Um, all right, so let's talk about adding details and textures. One of the first easy things you can do to add details and textures is just to overlap some of the forms that you've already established. So we're just going to do a little bit of that. Okay. Uh, here, I'm going to break these up a little bit more. So, yeah. But I'll, I'll recap these things for people who are in the ad break right now. Oh, thank you for the follows, Perry Berry. And um, I am, I am, uh, I am Fata. Welcome in. Ads. Yes, yes, guys. I do run ads. They do help keep my streams monetarily viable. Thank you for sticking around. <laughs> I hope they're all right guys okay for those of you not in the ads everybody type in exclamation mark giveaway and let's just pretend that there's a raffle giveaway happening right now <laughs> is that troll nah let's do it let's do it everyone in the chat who's not who doesn't have an ad right now just type in exclamation mark giveaway yeah exclamation mark raffle anything and they're gonna be like yo yo I thought he said nothing's happening why why have you forsaken me <laughs> <laughs> you guys are actually so troll oh man there it is everybody type it in everyone type it in i mean i'm troll too i'm troll for instigating this all right let me know when you guys are uh back from the ad break almost maybe right ah some of you missed the giveaway what a shame thank you for the follows marvin appreciate it and also duck the pig hey welcome back in but all right so you'll notice here um we're just kind of slowly adding in some of the details right now just nice uh nice little details here for the design uh, and this is where i usually kind of go in and start also breaking up the silhouette just a little bit not too much um, but just kind of enough there to give it some texture and maybe some interesting kind of shapes, right? So maybe I'll put like one little strand of hair that kind of just peeks out this way, like this. That's it, you know? Give it a little bit of form, give it a little bit of detail, but already off the bat, um, uh, this is already kind of starting off to look a little bit more structured. Uh, but yes, are you guys back from the ad break? Let me know in the chat for those of you who got an ad earlier. Uh, don't, don't listen to chat. There was no raffle, no giveaways going on, guys. Don't be fooled, okay? Don't be fooled by chat's uh, tricks out here. But you guys are back? Okay, cool, cool. You guys are back from the ad break. Nice, nice. Um, so as I was saying during the ad break, basically at this stage right here is where I'm actually going in now and adding in texture. And oftentimes the way that I add texture is I actually just kind of, uh, I add in here some overlapping kind of forms closer to the main chunks. Um, oh, thank you. Appreciate that. And the reason why I do this is actually because if you take a look at how the strand of hair works, so here's, for example, um, I'm gonna do it on this demo here, but if you take the strand of hair, let's just say we have like one strand of hair, right? And if you take it as a cylindrical mass like this, um, basically because hair is, um, cylindrical, right? Oh, shoot. To <laughs> Toba, thank you so much. We need to do actually two other. We need to do three raffle spins today. Uh, this is actually insane. Or actually, here's what I'm gonna do because I think there's a lot of raffle spins today. Um, how about I give you guys for one of the raffle spins, I'm gonna give you guys a new emote. Let me actually turn it on for you guys. I was waiting to do this. Thanks for giving me a reason to do this now. Um, before one of the ra one of the the raffle spins here, um. What is a raffle spin? It's a giveaway. It's a giveaway that I do every time we get a thousand bits on my stream. Um, it's just a free giveaway that everyone can join in, but it's not happening right now. Um, but here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm giving you guys a new emote here in the chat. This is it. 
you guys already know case some floosh case some floosh there you go so that's going to count as one of the raffle spins because um we have so many raffles today and um yeah we're just going to give you guys case some floosh there it is <laughs> uh i made that one yesterday very scuffed but you know we gotta we gotta make a few scuffed drawings um, but anyways, here we're talking about the density of hair and notice here how the hair texture as it wraps around here, the, um, as it wraps around the cylinder or kind of the, the hair strand, it's going to be, it's going to have a little bit more kind of a breakage towards the ends there. And so we're utilizing that same concept now, but for more, um, kind of like these other shapes here, still your fave. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Interesting. Huh? What does floosh mean? I think floosh is supposed to be flush. So it's, a, I had to look this up too, but apparently, um, there's a flushed emoji, right? Where you're kind of blushing and stuff. And then floosh is when you take that same emoji and you're kind of like, huh? kind of like that. And you like zoom in, <laughs> you zoom in. I don't know. I don't know when to use it to be honest, but I thought it was a really funny emote. I saw someone using it the other day on a stream it just looked great. K keeping up with the trends with Jay-Z. Heck yeah. You know me, guys. I'm young and hip out here. Just because it was my birthday on Monday doesn't mean that I'm not young and hip and fresh with the with the Gen Zers, the Zoomers out here. Yes, sir. Bussin' bussin'. Sheesh. Um, but yes, everyone who's here right now, welcome in, guys. Hopefully you're all doing well today. Um, I know there's a lot of you who are here right now, so let me give a quick intro of myself for those of you who are curious. Um, if it's your first time here, let's do a proper intro in three, two, uh, one. Welcome in everybody. My name is K Sim and I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, right now, I'm prepping to work as a character designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education here on Twitch, or you're just looking to hang out with my dog who is over there, uh, make sure to leave a follow and also like and subscribe if you're watching this video on YouTube. All right, but there you go. That's my little brief intro for those of you guys who are new here and you don't know who I am. Um, yeah, it's a little bit about me. Um, yes, I do have a YouTube channel as well. I try to upload on there as often as I can and stuff. Um, often as I can, because I'm trying to make YouTube a little bit more, uh, my YouTube channel kind of more accessible to those of you who maybe can't watch my streams on a regular basis and all that stuff. Wow. We got a lot of followers just now. Sheesh. Am I, wait, is it cause I'm on the, am I on the front page? Thank you. If I am welcome in everyone who's coming in. If you're from the front page, um, Prebis, thank you so much for the sub as well too. Oh man. Sheesh. So much, so much support today. Thank you for the, thank you for the primer as well. Uh, sad pocket. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Glad that you guys are enjoying some educational content on a Saturday. Like, yo, some of y'all are nerdy. I want y'all to, to, to admit this, but y'all are watching a nerdy art streamer here on Twitch. I mean, I'm not okay. Now that I think about it, Twitch is a pretty nerdy platform. If you're playing games out here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if you're, if you're playing games, watching games, we got to embrace nerd culture, uh, nerd culture. But I will say that there's not a lot of educational art streamers on Twitch. And so if you're here, you're a different type of nerd. You're the type of nerd that likes to, likes to study and get better with their art, but that's not a bad thing. You know, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, and uh, thank you for thank you for the follows today, guys. Uh, your YouTube has been very helpful. Thank you, thank you, Nicosia. Um, you know, sometimes I worry because I'm I'm uploading these videos and I'm just thinking, like, man, am I really contributing at all? Because there's so many YouTube videos that are already out there on the platform, and I'm just like, I don't know, is my is my video really gonna be any different from the other person who also made a, um, you know, who also made. Uh, uh, how to draw hair tutorial or something, but, um, comments like that one, um, comments like that, I think really let me know that there is, there are people out there who are looking for these type of videos. Um, you know, maybe you watch a YouTube video, but you like the way that I teach, right? Um, or you like the way you like the way that I make my videos much longer than other people's, which I always worry about too, because, I don't know. I feel like on YouTube, everyone always wants those short videos. Everyone's always looking for those, uh, five minute 
easy hacks for drawing hair, you know, but they, would you click a two hour long video of how to draw hair? Maybe, maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. But, um, I think, I think I've come to realize that there's always an audience for these type of things. And, um, I just appreciate my community out here for being super supportive. You guys have helped me grow so much on YouTube. It's actually insane. We're going to hit almost 5k subscribers on YouTube. I think, I don't know when, maybe end of this month or maybe next week, or I don't know when, but we, we just hit 4k like recently too, like I think a week ago or two weeks ago. So, um, a lot of you guys have been coming out there, supporting the videos, leaving comments and, uh, liking the video. So appreciate, appreciate all of that guys. Thank you so much. We're going to take the YouTube, we're going to take the YouTube platform by storm. All right. We're just going to, we're going to come in here. We're going to, we're going to, we're just going to be like, yo, it's me, KSM, which is cool. I think, I think that's a possible goal because you know, we've, we've done it on, um, on Twitch. People I think know us on Twitch, but not on YouTube yet. Um, highlights of your streams clip the most important parts until like five, 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, I thought about that, but then I also realized that, um, I teach, I teach on Twitch for, for two hours, three hours. And I don't want any of that to be gone. Right. I don't want, I don't want people to miss out and just only see the 10 minutes. Cause that's the thing, right? If you see only 10 minutes and then that's it. But also I want to make, I want to make art education as free as possible. Right. So I don't really care. So I just, just a heads up. I don't really care too much about like trying to get a million viewers, um, or anything like that. That's not my goal on YouTube. My goal on YouTube is just to help people, uh, get educated if they can't watch my streams live. And so that's really it. Um, it's not about trying to go viral like Mr. Beast or anything. Um, it's, it's purely just because I want to help people out who can't watch my streams. Um, you know, and you can watch my content on your time. Uh, but thank you for the five gifted out here. Natasha, appreciate that. And also Jim Kim is Korean. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Kika, Kika Finn, Evolver, that boy, Victor. So many follows today as well. Thank you for the, for the subs as well, guys. And the hype train. Sheesh. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's less about trying to be like, oh, let me give them a little 10 minutes and bring them to my channel. Like, I think people can watch. And if, if you like, if you like, um, if you like my, my, my Twitch page and stuff and, you know, but, but you like, you can't watch all of it or maybe, or maybe you want to watch, you know, two times speed and stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's why. So that's why my, my videos on YouTube are super long because I also think too, that, um, the other thing too, is, you know, there's so many, there's so many videos on YouTube that are like five minute, 10 minute tutorials on like five mistakes you shouldn't make or good versus bad artists and all of that stuff. Um, and while I think that's cool, I actually don't think that's as it's going to be as helpful for those of you who are actually looking to get in depth into the detail of learning a topic, right? Those are cool videos for entertainment. They're good videos to give you a head start on how to think about things. But if you really want to get the practice in, right, you have to have some sort of long-term structure, whether that's going to an art school, whether that's uh, paying for an online course, or um, hopefully my YouTube channel where you can kind of treat it as a class and you can watch it for two hours, practice along with me and all of that stuff. Um, and so that's why I also make those videos longer on YouTube because I feel like there's just such a high concentration of those short clickbaity, um, easy tutorial videos. And they all, I don't know, look, no offense to these YouTubers. I actually know some of them personally. Um, but I, I, you know, I want to do something a little bit different on the platform. And again, I'm not, I'm not there to try to go super viral. So it's okay. I think a lot of the work I put in to market myself and to, to let people know about me that's here on Twitch because a lot of you guys know me on Twitch and you guys can see how I talk and how I work here. And then you like my video, you check them out on YouTube. Uh, but anyways, sorry, we got into the topic of, uh, <laughs> we got into the topic of, of, uh, YouTube and all that stuff. Um, sorry, we're here to talk about hair, um, hair, but thank you again for all the support. Um, and thank you, K dog. Appreciate that. So someone had a question earlier about how come you decided to teach Twitch in this way. Um, so for, for context, for those of you who are new here, by the way, I actually, um, I actually used to be a software engineer and I quit art and didn't do drawing for about six years. So after high school, after I dropped out of art school, um, in college, and then I studied computer science and then eventually became a software engineer. There was actually a six year period where I didn't draw at all because I was super frustrated 
about not being able to draw and, and feeling like I sucked and feeling like it was too late for me and all of that stuff. Um, and so I decided to start streaming on Twitch as a way to just start drawing for fun again and to hopefully make some new art friends because all of my current friends at the time were software engineers and tech bros who didn't really understand the art space. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about because there's a lot of tech bros who are, you know, using AI art without really considering how it impacts um, those in the art community. Um, those were the people I was hanging out with. And so it was hard to really be myself and talk about art in a community like that, that didn't really understand the struggle and the amount of work that goes into being an artist. Um, but anyway, so I started streaming art on Twitch just for fun, just to kind of get my practice in. And after streaming art on Twitch for about a year, I really started to realize that I actually enjoyed art a lot more than I did um, computer science and software engineering. Uh, to the point where I decided to quit my job back in 2021 to actually pursue streaming full time and to also stream being uh, uh, pursue being an artist full time as well. Uh, and then in 2022 was when I decided I wanted to work for larger studios. And so that's when I started to really double down on my fundamentals. And so I started bu buying books. I started paying for online classes and uh, watching more uh, videos and stuff. And then just reteaching it out here for you guys because I wanted to share all the things that I'd learned, especially for those of you who maybe can't afford to pay for an art class or to pay for, you know, all the books and stuff that you see on the internet that people always talk about. Um, and so that naturally, unintentionally, led me to act, to being an, to being a, a teacher here on Twitch and being an educator here on Twitch. Um, but this is not my main job for those of you who are curious. Um, this is more of my side, kind of like my second job teaching out here, though I do enjoy it a lot. Um, my main job is I work, I work in the, um, I work in the animation industry. So, uh, for those of you who are curious about my story, basically I was able to, uh, get a job working as an, uh, working in animation, uh, for the studio that made Castlevania. And so that's, that's currently where I work right now. Um, but a lot of that again comes from, uh, comes from me just grinding and studying as hard as I could. Um, and then resharing that knowledge to you guys, which honestly I think is a great, um, which I, I honestly think is really great because, uh, one of the best ways I think to learn something is, and to really retain knowledge is to actually reteach it. So by reteaching all the stuff here to you guys, um, we actually, or I actually, you know, remember things a lot better. And so it's helped me out tremendously in my own fundamentals and stuff. But yeah, that's kind of how I became a teacher here on Twitch, completely by accident um, that that happened. But also, um, I have been teaching for a while. So prior to, you know, prior to teaching art on Twitch and stuff, I did used to do a lot of tutoring back in the days. I taught computer science when I was in college, um, you know, stuff like that. So there's definitely it's not like I'm, I'm new to teaching. Um, it's more like I'm new to teaching art, but I have been teaching actually for a bit of time. Uh, big fan of Castlevania. Oh, nice. Super awesome. Thank you, Mikey. Mikey makes manga. Great name, by the way. Uh, that's scientifically proven by Richard Feynman, I think, actually. What's scientifically proven? The, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let me know. Oh, learning by teaching. Yeah, I think it's great. I actually think it's super awesome. Um, man's is helping us while helping himself. Yes, sir. Always. But um, I wanted to show you guys the, the, the texture that I added here. Look at this. Notice how texture can go a long way here. But you'll see here how I added the texture and notice how I'm still keeping and retaining the underlying shapes that we have. This is kind of the key thing that I want to highlight to you guys is that even though there's so much detail in this hair, notice how I didn't jump into the details right away. I'm still retaining a lot of the shape language that we're utilizing in the early steps. And instead, I'm building on top of those things, adding a bit of structure and adding it adding in a bit of texture so as we approach different hairstyles on today's video you're going to see how this approach is still going to be relevant across the board um, but it's just going to be utilized in different ways but all i'm really doing now is i'm building on top of the things that we've already drawn on right and it's still retaining that structure and this is actually going to be a great great way for also being able to later shade your hair um, color your hair and all of that stuff for uh, for those of you who are looking to do that we're not going to be, I might have to do a kind of a, a brief shading and, and maybe, maybe coloring today because I do want to go over all the other, other hairstyles we have. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we might not, do, we might not get into shading today. I know today's going to be a shorter stream though. I wish it was longer because I would love to, 
I love drawing hair, um, if you guys haven't noticed. And I think hair is honestly a really cool, a really cool kind of topic to, to go over. Cause I think it really highlights a lot of the power of good shape design and shape language overall. Um, do I got a YouTube channel? Yes, I do have a YouTube channel. I do. Um, thanks for dropping the link, Romy. It's right there on the, in the chat. Um, how much do I need to be drawing every day if I want to get hired at a studio like yours? Um, minimum eight hours. If you want to work professionally, um, in the, in the, in the art industry, but you know, um, in animation, you got to be working a minimum of eight hours and drawing for eight hours a day, because that's realistically what you're going to be doing on the job. Right. So you can't, I don't know. It's, it's hard. It's, it's hard to just like learn how to draw for eight hours every day. Um, all of a sudden after getting a job. So you want to definitely make sure you're putting in those hours, putting in those practice and being able to put the mileage in for the work that you're doing. Um, I draw for fun fact, I draw for about 12 hours every day. So I draw usually for about four hours for stream. Uh, and then after that, I go right into doing studio work for about eight hours. I try not to do more than eight hours because I don't like, I don't like getting burnt out. Um, but I usually draw an average 12 hours a day. Um, but again, I want to remind you guys, um, I want to remind you guys that, uh, that's not how I started, right? So when I first started drawing after, you know, uh, that my six year hiatus, I was, I was only drawing for about 30 minutes every day, if anything, maybe 10 minutes because I didn't have much time, right? I was doing a full-time job. Um, and so I had to kind of figure out times to do that while also not being super tired. So you don't have to just kind of a, a heads up here. You don't have to be drawing long periods right now, especially if you don't have the time to give for it. Um, but you can definitely work your way up into, you know, ramping yourself into doing stuff like, uh, longer drawing sessions and, and so forth. So just kind of a fair, you know, heads up there that it's like, yes, now I work and draw for 12 hours, but it wasn't, that wasn't the case when I was first starting out. Um, that is definitely something I too also had to, to work up and, and build up. Um, your tendonitis can take drawing sessions, long drawing sessions. So, you know, that's, um, I do agree that you, you definitely want to take care of your health and stuff, but I think there are also things you can do to avoid injury. Um, I actually have a YouTube, ooh, is it, I might've, I might've privated it, but I had a YouTube video where I talked a bit about avoiding artist injury. Um, yeah. And in that video, um, in that video, I, I talk a bit about how you can kind of, you know, fix your ergonomics and also fix your positioning, change how, change the way that you draw as well. Um, and these subtle changes can actually make it so that you're, you're less prone to injury. So for example, um, when I draw, I actually change my settings so that it doesn't grip as hard. Uh, I'm not gripping as hard on the pencil and I, and I'm not pressing as hard as well on the pencil too. Um, yo, but thank you for the five gifted sub Usu. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that too. Uh, widow crossing, uh, go Jeffrey, even, uh, cicada darkest hour and, uh, Cacho. Wait, did we actually, Oh shoot. We've already hit past the sub goal. I didn't even realize you guys are out here being sneaky. Um, but if you guys didn't know every 10 subs out here on my stream unlocks a new resource for everybody to download. Um, and so if you guys are here right now, watching live, make sure you go to my discord channel because I'm going to be uploading this sheet as well for you guys. Now, uh, this one right here will be free to grab. So let me go ahead and post that on the discord, um, here on my discord channel. I always upload some resources that everybody can go ahead and download. Um, out here. So make sure to grab these if you're watching live because these are only available to those of you who are watching live. So if you're watching my YouTube video now, I'm sorry. Okay. You just got to come watch me on stream. Just come, just come to my channel. Um, but here's the worksheet that we're working on today. Here's what we covered last stream, how to draw dynamic poses. So I showed you guys how to utilize perspective, 3d forms, anatomy to draw crazy stuff like this. Um, and then I also gave you guys this uh, sheet right here, which is going to be part of my digital art book re uh, later releasing later this year. It covers some of the facial features. And then here is a sheet for covering the skeletal and muscular anatomy of the head, which I created and compiled last year. So uh, there you go. Grab these guys. These are free to grab again. Make sure to, to utilize that. And thank you for everybody who has been subscribing, uh, gifting subs and all of that stuff. You guys have been tremendous out here. Um, let me go here and let me see, um, Kasem, how do you manage a healthy work-life balance when drawing that much? 
Um, <laughs> next question. Next, next. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think I think the um, what I do is I try to I try to really have uh, what's it called? I try to have a routine and a schedule to keep my sanity in check. Um, and so after, usually after my, after my 12 hours of drawing, I don't, I don't draw, I don't do anything else. I just relax. I watch, I watch TV. I play games. I hang out with my family. I play, you know, I play with my dog. So I try to separate, I try to separate as much as I can the, um, the delineation between work and what I do in my personal life. And I think that helps out a lot, to be honest. But again, it, it, it all depends. Um, it all depends on what, what you, uh, what you're doing as well and kind of what your situation is. But I think for me, having kind of that separation really does help. Now, what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm actually going to go ahead and clean up some of these lines and I might want to actually go for a more simpler look here for this guy, because I think he has a lot of straight lines or straight hair. And so by actually kind of going in here and softening things out, we might actually be able to um, add a little bit more breakage in the hair that allows the viewer to kind of visualize the structure just a tad bit more, right? But again, you can kind of, uh, you can go however you want at this point. It's just a matter of adding in texture. Um, but you can kind of see, I'll show you guys in a second, um, where we started off with, with kind of like the, the bald head structure there. And from that bald structure going in and, and kind of adding in some of the components of the hairstyle, right? But there you go. We did hair number one. Easy peasy, right? So we started off here with um, a nice bald head, talked about hairlines for a little bit. Then we added in some basic shapes to give us the silhouette and overall volume of the hairstyle. Then we went in here and broke it up into small, medium, large shapes to give us some nice, interesting aesthetics for our shape design. Uh, and then last but not least, we added in some texture. Right. So this is, again, the usual four steps that I take whenever I'm drawing hair. Um, and I'll show you guys how I do this again across different other hairstyles, because we have a few other ones um, that I want to cover today. At least at least one more. Uh, I'm looking at the time and I uh, man, we'll see, because today is today's a little bit of a shorter stream because I do have to head out today. And I even I was even thinking like, man, should I even stream today? But you know what? The grind don't stop. And I wanted to I wanted to make sure we covered this one, even if it was shorter. Um, but I do apologize for those of you who usually, you know, come in for the longer streams and stuff. Um, do you feel confident to share your old work with your new art? I'd love to see the progress as well. Mm, yeah, we can do that. I just haven't had the, I, I don't know. I'm sure I have it somewhere. Maybe my Instagram, my old Instagram art. Um, I might have some old, of my old stuff there. Or I can show you guys what I did in high school. And, and how I, I guess, compare <laughs> to, to my stuff from high school. I can possibly do that. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just going to add in a little bit of a uh, silhouette, kind of just to kind of showcase uh, a bit of the, the form there. There you go. Nice and easy. Okay, there you go. So we did our first um, our first hairstyle right here. Not bad, right, guys? Um, how do, how often does it feel you're forcing yourself in these 12 hours? Mm, not too often. I mean, work is work, and so I just have to do it. Um, but there, it's not like I'm drawing for 12 hours straight. I definitely do take breaks on occasion, you know, um, here and there. But I don't think it's like, I don't know. It's It's not necessarily like I'm forcing myself. It's because like, Usually I have something that I that I, I'm planning to do, right? So for work, I have a I have a list of things that I have to do, scenes I have to work on, characters that I have to work on, and that kind of stuff. Um and then for the four the other four hours is is purely for for fun. It's just what I do with you guys out here on Twitch. So just kind of enjoying that process. But all right. Um we've got here this hairstyle. So let's go in now and let's do um, let's do one more. I think we can either do this this textured one or maybe I'll even ask you guys because I think we only have room to do one more like really good one. Um, sitting for 12 hours a day, I, st I stretch and I get up, you know, um, I get up and I do stuff. How do you have any suggestions on how to find the people? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to answer questions and while I answer questions, I'm going to open up here for you guys to be able to pick 
uh, which reference you want me to work on next. Okay, so um, let me move uh, this girl here and I'm gonna let you guys like pick and choose like one, two, three, four kind of thing. Okay. This guy is particularly large for some reason. All right, so let's go ahead and do that in a poll. One, two, three. Um, and I'm gonna let you guys choose and let's uh, run that poll real quick. And so we'll only do one of these today and I might, what the heck? Um, let's see here. What you want? What you want? It's question mark. Uh, one, two, or three. All right, guys, let's do a quick two minute poll and then I will try to answer uh, questions in the chat that I see while we do this voting. Um, how do you find people? Oh, let's see here. Do you have any suggestions on how to find the people you can learn and work with the best? Um, I would say, you know, take a look at platforms like YouTube, take a pl look, look at platforms like Instagram, Twitch, and just hang out and see how they work. Because, um, um, I mean, this is my stream. If you like my stream, all I do is teaching. But again, I know that there are different people who like different, um, who like, uh, what's it called? Different ways of teaching, right? So you might like the way that I teach. You might not like the way that I teach and that's completely fine. Um, what about your eyes? Eight hours on a screen could be hard on them. Yeah. So again, I, I do take breaks. I do that whole 20, 20, 20 rule. It's like every 20 minutes for 20 seconds, you stare at something. I don't know, whatever, something like that. Stare at something that's 20 feet away. So I do a little bit of that. I do take breaks. Um, so it's not like I'm drawn six hours or 12 hours straight. Um, your hand cannot get hurt through drawing. Uh, you can possibly reduce it. I don't know if you can fully avoid it, um, but yeah. Uh, can you explain more tips to not get injured? My neck is killing me for drawing too much. I don't know if my YouTube video is still there, but if it is still there, I'd recommend it. Um, I, I don't know if it's still there, um, but I would usually say having a good ergonomics. So I use something called the Sketchboard Pro. It's a stand that I use for my iPad, which allows me to elevate it to about 30 to 45 degrees. And that in itself, this alone has been one of the best things I've bought for the iPad because of that reason, as well as it allows me to rest my arm on the edge here without having to let it fall off. So I'd take a look at that. Um, somebody sent me the Patreon link. I don't have a Patreon guys, uh, only discord. Um, oh, Skillshare. I have a Skillshare as well too. Um, but yeah, thanks for everybody coming out here. Are you using 3d party software to screen mirror your iPad? Mm, not anymore. I'm actually just using the HDMI. Yes. Have you ever tried? I have tried it. It's okay. I'm, I'm, it's all right for me. Um, let's see here. Where, 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 where some people coming in here. Welcome in guys. Um, of young emo case. I'm hiding in the corner. Young emo case. I'm? Who's young emo case? I'm in the corner. Uh, do I collect art books? Oh, a little too much. I think I have too many art books out here. All right. So number two, you guys wanted this one. The, the, the texture of this one, I think is a pretty cool one. Um, yeah, it's a great game changer. If you guys want to take a look, there's actually a 10% discount. Um, really quick. Um, hold on Uh sketchboard or stand. I think there you go. Um, so um, this one right here actually is a 10% off discount on the Sketchboard Pro if you guys get it. I'm not sponsored by them, but again, I I cannot speak enough about how much I love the the Sketchboard Pro. It's been a game changer for me when it's been when it's come to drawing. Um, and I probably have avoided a lot of injuries just from using that alone. And I personally like the Sketchboard over other products because I think the quality is great. It's interchangeable, it looks nice and sleek, um, and it hasn't failed me yet. You know, so I'd recommend it if you guys are interesting are interested in that. Oh, you mean um, you want to see my old drawings? I'm oh man, we'll have to do it another day, but I'm down to show it at some point. It's not like I it's not like I'm going to avoid I'm, av I'm avoiding it. I just I don't know if we'll have t time uh, today to go over that. So but we can do it at some point, you know. All right, so let's go ahead now, guys, and let's talk about drawing different textures here and how we can maybe utilize um, some of the things we've talked about already uh, with the shape design and all of that stuff and actually incorporate, incorporate it here on this drawing. So I am going to be drawing out the face and stuff, but again, this is not a focus on face streams uh, or how to draw faces. This is mostly a focus on... Uh, this is mostly a focus on uh, hair today. So just a, just a heads up. 
Mm, what does interchangeable mean in this context? So here, this black part right here on the stand, you can actually take it out and switch it out for a different size. So if you have a smaller sized iPad or if they, let's say, come out with a bigger sized iPad, you can actually still keep the main portion of the stand and instead alter some of the components uh, to make it so that you're not actually paying for a new stand every time, which I love because, you know, I'm all about sustainability and making sure, you know, I'm trying to keep my products for as long uh, as I can, because I don't know, I'm not a big fan of having to buy new things all the time. So, yeah. Um, but let's see here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you guys how I draw out, um, heads. I got a, I got a question one time on my YouTube channel about how I draw heads. It's honestly not too far off from the Loomis method. I just, I just use the Loomis method. Um, but I'm, I've modified it to my style and stuff. And I think it works out well for me. Um, did I say I use HDMI? Yes. Yeah. So I use HDMI and then I plug that into a capture card. And so that capture card, um, I've already, I, I've owned a capture card, but this is my first time using it. Um, but I like, I like using it now because it's much smoother, um, actually than using a program, um, to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. L Loomis method is king. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with Loomis method. Um, but I always tell people like, you know, the Loomis method is a great place to start, but as you draw and stuff over time, you're going to naturally, you're going to naturally find your own um, approach for drawing, you know, your own quote unquote style. Ooh, style. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, thank you for the follows too, Jem and everybody else coming in here today. Welcome, welcome into the case and crew. So many follows today on a Saturday. It actually kind of, it's a bummer. It's a bummer that I got to have a shorter stream today because I feel like the energy today is, whew. And I mean, what do you expect, right? Out of a Saturday stream, one of my favorite days to stream on Twitch is Saturdays. The energy always is like 10 out of 10 on a Saturday stream. A lot of new people always come in here. And those of you who do hang out here, you guys always have great energy. So um, I appreciate you guys coming out and I hope you guys enjoy the content so far. Um, but yeah, here we go. I'm just going to lay out here some of the general structure for the face. Again, kind of basic Loomis method, but also not necessarily Loomis method, you know, like find your own kind of rhythms and stuff and find the, the shapes that work for you. But yeah, let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and speed run um, this face a little bit so that way we can actually jump into, you know, drawing out the hair today because I wanted to have some face, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to have no face at all. So let me go ahead and just do that. Um, how do, how short a stream are we talking today? Um, <laughs> um, I have about less than an hour with you guys, maybe about another 50 minutes with you guys. Is that cool with you guys? I'm sorry. I know. I know it's not a lot of time, especially compared to my usual stream times. Um, but we have about an hour left out here on the stream. Hey, how's it going? Clop. Welcome back in. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and draw some eyes. Um, ba, 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 ba. what is your opinion on learning 3d for art or comics in general? Um, I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think, I think 3d is a great tool that didn't exist in the past. And I think it'll unlock many doors for learning, um, and increasing workflow. But I always tell people to not be super reliant on uh, 3d for those of you who want to be 2d artists, because at the end of the day, learning the fundamentals yourself and being able to do those things without the need to have to use 3d programs, um, can actually be a tremendous boost and only make it easier for you in the long run to be able to draw too. Right. So, um, I always tell people like, yeah, you know, it's cool. Learn how to use 3d programs, use them for character modeling and poses and stuff, but also take the time to practice. Take the time to practice drawing these things as well without the, without the model because you don't want to be too reliant on it that you can't produce the work that you want to do without having to use a tool like that, 
right? So this is where, again, I'm going to go show it really quick, but this is, again, um, if you guys ever have ever struggled with doing dynamic poses, anything like this that you're seeing here, put an F in the chat because on my last stream, this is exactly what we covered. I showed you guys how to lay your characters in perspective, how to get depth with your character, how to get foreshortening with your character. This is that stream. So if you, if you guys are struggling with it, please check out that video. Highly recommend it. If you guys are watching from YouTube, you guys know where to go. It's on my channel. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'll say is like, there's nothing wrong with it. And I think it's an incredible tool that has, uh, probably changed the game for a lot of artists. If, if, uh, if, you know, if it won't in the future, uh, it de or it definitely will in the future, if it hasn't already, but it's a, it's a great tool. Um, digital in general has been an, a, a big, you know, positive change overall for, for the industry. Um, but yeah, welcome in everybody. Uh, learning 2d will always make you faster anyway, so you can take the advantage of 3d as a tool further. Yeah. And you know, part of the, part of the, the problem with 3d, and this is not necessarily a problem. I think it's just how it's designed. Um, but sometimes people come to me and they say, Kasem, you know, I tried the mannequin approach for drawing my characters, but it always looks so stiff. How can I make my mannequins look not as stiff? And I always tell people, I think you're approaching it a little incorrectly here because the whole point of a mannequin is that it's supposed to look stiff. It's supposed to look rigid. It's supposed to give form and three dimensionality. If you want to get move away from uh, rigidity, you want to be able to learn how to use gesture, right? So you combine an, um, mannequinized structures and stuff with gesture and you'll get some nice forms, right? You'll get some nice um, flowing character designs and all that stuff. But the mannequin is doing his job. If your characters look stiff and they look, you know, rigid, that's, that's it. That's what the mannequin is for. It's supposed to give you an understanding of simplified 3d volume in a way that I think is, you know, easily, uh, applicable and, and, and flexible to be able to use in different approaches. But if you're going to be using, let's say a 3d model to pose your characters, those 3d models by themselves are going to look pretty stiff. And so you're going to want to learn how to apply some of the gesture, whether that's through your line art, the, the way that you exaggerate your form, squash and stretch, all of that stuff. Um, and I think that'll be, um, that'll be kind of like the, the, the secret sauce that you can add to your art to make it look a little bit more lively, you know? All right. But, uh, for those of you who are watching me draw this face, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm speed running it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really going over how I do the hair right now or the, the face right now. I'm just, I'm just going in and, um, but, 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 you know, speed running the face. Let's see here. Um, imagination will f will fill the blanks where rigidity can't. Mm, yeah, I think so. Um, and yeah, so the style that I'm drawing in right now, by the way, um, is going to be mostly in uh, kind of the Castlevania style. So for those of you wondering, this is the style that I do for work because I I work at Powerhouse, and so most of our most of our shows and productions look kind of like that semi-realistic anime-ish style. So if you're wondering, you're like, huh, why does this style look kind of like Castlevania-ish? Yeah, it's because I, it's because I work there. And so this is a style that I draw regularly. But honestly, even before I joined Castle, uh, even before I joined Powerhouse and stuff, um, I was already kind of drawing in this style. So it's not too far off. Um, and yo, hey, Filipino goat, welcome in. But okay, cool. So we've got here our simplified, um, simplified face. Uh, not too bad, not, not too shabby, I would say, for a quick little speed drawing. This probably took us about uh, maybe five minutes, give or take. So let's go in now, guys, and let's knock out how to draw the hair for this one. So personally speaking, I think when it comes to drawing out hair... Um, especially um, with something that's a little bit more curly, kind of a denser curl. Uh, one of the best things you can do is really, really focus on the overall, uh, the overall shape design. Now for her, I'm going to give her a rounder hairline here. So even though you can't see her hairline, right? I still talk about hairline with you guys because I think that establishing a good hairline for your characters can really go um, a long way. Right. If you can get a good hairline in, it can kind of answer a lot of the ambi ambiguous ambiguity. Sorry, um, a lot of the ambiguity there for what's going on with the actual uh, structure of the head. So make sure you know you incorporate some of that 
incorporate that hairline in there. So that's going to be that first step that we just did. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now and fill this one out and let's start talking about some of the shape designs um, that are going to be in here. You love the eyelashes. I know the way that the way that Castlevania does eyelashes, it's 10 out of 10. Um, have you, have you more artists like this explaining? Wait, what? Have you more artists like this explaining? Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I understand, but yes, welcome in. <laughs> Thank you for the possible kind words. Um, Kasem is weird. He calls, he calls them cheat sheets, but doesn't put them on cheat sheet channel. I was confused at first too. Wait, what? Um, oh yeah. The, the cheat sheets, um, the cheat sheets are, are, um, um, those are for the subscribers the general art resources those are um i just put that for everybody yes cheek sheets but okay let's talk a little bit about volume now so let's let's go ahead and um, apply here just the general kind of structure um for this character now for this one um notice how for this character we went for a more sharper look for this design um and so instead what i'm going to do is I'm going to go in here now and I'm going to actually kind of go instead for a much more rounder design for this character. So at this, um, at this step right here, guys, this is where I'm going to go in. And again, I'm focusing more on the overall shape. I'm not looking necessarily to capture all the details, just some overall volume that I think will help us get started on laying out the groundwork, uh, for this hairstyle, right? Um, it was not for you, KSM. I, oh, I see. I see. Got it. Um, it's red. Oh, I didn't close the prediction, did I? Let me close the prediction real quick. Yes, I am wearing red today, guys. Today's a red, a red color day. Congratulations to those of you who voted correctly and got red. Um, there you go. And also, uh, for those of you who are interested in some Skillshare, here is a pinned comment for Skillshare. I'm gonna pin it real quick. Uh, there you go. Free to free to sign up for Skillshare if you guys want. Uh, you get a one month. Okay, but here let's go back on the hair. So again, I'm going to just keep it nice and simple. Um, let's actually add in here. Uh, I don't know what this is called, like a bandana or, or something. I don't know. Chat, if you guys want to let me know, <laughs> let me know what she, what she has on her head. I think it's like some sort of bandana, right? But I'm going to be adding this bandana in and notice how I'm going to be adding it on top of the forms that we got here, right? So you'll see how I'm kind of keeping that structure um, of the of the hair and the and the the structure of the head in mind, but I'm just adding in a little bit more more flow, right? Um, oh, thank you, Suze. A cloth hairband. There you go. But let's kind of go in now and let's kind of add in some roundness here, right? So I'm going to be adding in again, just keeping it nice and round. Um, we're not focusing yet on all the textures and details. We'll we'll jump into that in a bit. But for this stage. Just looking out here and seeing if we can kind of understand a little bit more of what's going on with the hair line, uh, the hair shape and all of that stuff. And we might even kind of, you know, change it up a little bit. So maybe I'll maybe I'll kind of uh, tune out her hair and make certain shapes a little bit more stylized. So you can imagine here, uh, I mean, she has uh, her shoulder here and stuff. So let me kind of. Let me add that in like that, just for her shoulder. Okay. There you go. Just wanted to make it so that the, the, the hair silhouette kind of flows a little bit better. All right. Um, do I do, do I do any animal anatomy? Um, not, not yet, not yet. Um, but we will be doing some animal stuff, um, in my second boot camp. So once this one finishes, we'll be starting a new semester, probably in the summer. So this is like the winter spring season of my boot camp for the first boot camp fundamentals. And then we'll be having our second boot camp probably in the summer, um, where we're going to be covering more, um, specific designs and different variations of designs as well. Um, but okay, um, let's kind of go in here now and let's, let's start talking a bit about actually breaking up these designs and, and, you know, adding in a little bit more, um, a little bit more texture and stuff here to kind of make it look like the, uh, make it look like the model that we're working with. Right.
Okay, so let's go in and let's start let's start breaking these up. Um, how do I make the shoulders and necks less less masculine? I think generally what you can do to make things less masculine is to avoid kind of these larger uh, boxier shapes and instead focus on establishing uh, more uh, rounded kind of soft transitional shapes. I think that'll be a lot better. So this is going to be tricky because I think the way that you can depict uh, any texture like this is going to vary across the board, um, right? So there's different styles you can use if you want to go for a highly rendered kind of textured style. I'm going to go for instead a more kind of like anime-ish style, so kind of like a 2D illustration style, but I'm going to be breaking it up here. Same strategy that I always utilize. Uh, I'm going to be breaking it up here into small, medium, large shapes, right? So here we're going to have kind of the the large kind of chunk there of the hair. Uh, maybe let's actually kind of bring this one out a little bit down more. Right, so small, medium, large shapes. This will kind of help us give an idea of the flow of the hair, right? So the hair is gonna kind of flow uh, out this way from the top, like so. And then from that section there, it's gonna kind of go out this way and then kind of fan out a little bit more as it kind of breaks out here, right? And so again, kind of utilizing these shape designs to kind of give us a rough idea of where to start, but we're gonna be piecing it out just a little bit more afterwards. Um, do you think you can show us how you work on anime spiky hairstyle? I know you normally keep try to keep it more realistic, but some anime spiky hair may not be possible IRL. Um, yeah, yeah, we can definitely do some of that. Um, I mean, we could have changed this one to be a little bit more anime style. I think the approach is still the same. The main difference is that you're going to have to maybe consider gravity a little bit less because you can imagine that with those anime hairstyles, uh, as you mentioned, you know, they're not going to be as realistic. And so gravity can, you can just throw gravity out the window because, <laughs> because those hairstyles do not abide by the laws of physics. Um, but yeah, we can definitely do some examples of that maybe on a stylized day. So if we're going to do like a day where we talk about different styles. Um, we can do like, you know, we can showcase like, oh, here's how I would draw an anime style as opposed to a, um, more realistic style. Spiky hair was definitely a trend in 2000s. Yeah, I remember when Yu-Gi-Oh! You guys remember that Yu-Gi-Oh! hairstyle? Man, I remember I used to draw characters that looked just like Yu-Gi because of the hairstyle. <laughs> that stuff stuck, man. The crazy anime uh, spiky hairstyle kind of thing. I loved it, you know? That's what I grew up with, so I can, I can appreciate it. Um... Let's see here. Yes, yeah, Sora. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts. The Kingdom Hearts style as well, too. Uh, true, true, true. But yeah, as you guys can see, right? I'm kind of just piecing out here, again, these volumes. So you can kind of imagine now already off the bat, we've already got here a good amount of structure uh, for the hair. Pretty solid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed run here because I think we've done all the grunt work of this hairstyle. Um, if you can get to this step right here, just break it down small, medium, large across the board of the hair. We've already started establishing not only the, the design, but we've also added in um, we've also added in now some some volume to really give it a little bit more of an aesthetic. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double up on certain areas here to give it some texture. Right. This is really the last final step here that I like to go for, um, adding in some texture and density around these areas here that we have split up. Um, so kind of just going in. Adding in some forms here, I think for uh, for curly hairstyles like this, having a good silhouette design um, and establishing kind of those curls around the ends there can really help also establish a bit of that texture. So you don't have to do a lot of texture inside as long as you're adding in some textures on the outside here. That can actually go a long way. Um, but here I'm going to add some kind of curls right here uh, towards the ends where we actually had the hair kind of break off. And again, this will help sell that idea of the small, medium, large shape design, but you can also add in some hair in here. So maybe I'll add in some kind of like curls right here to kind of help break up some of that silhouette. Uh, maybe right here towards kind of the, the root or the tip of the hair, we're going to also add some textures there. Maybe we'll add some locks that kind of go in this way. And so already off the bat, you can kind of see here by just breaking out some of those textures, easy peasy, man, this is it. Now, again, if you're doing a more um, anime style, like let's say the production of Castlevania or anything like that, um, you're definitely going to want to be considerate of how much detail you put in, because if you throw in too much detail, you're going to make your animators cry. 
You're going to make your animators cry. You're going to make me cry. You're going to make your uh, revisionist cry. So you want to make sure that when you're designing characters for animation, that you're choosing some of the main, main components. You know, don't go in too crazy with the details. For this one, we don't care because there's, we're not like, it's not like we're going to try to animate this character. Um, thankfully not. I would, I would actually cry if we had to animate this character's hairstyle. Um, but there's a lot of ways to simplify it as well too, right? So, um, I think a good example of this is if you watch, let me think, if you watch, um, Invincible, Invincible, there's a character in Invincible who has, um, kind of this textured hairstyle a little bit and the way that they approach it, I think is really interesting. So, yeah. Um, also Jay, Hey, thank you so much for the, uh, 32 months. How did you know I had that emote? Yes, guys, we we released a new emote out here on Twitch. Kasem, Kasem, uh, Floosh. It's, I don't know when, when to use it, but we just use it. It just exists, you know? Um, today we're covering hair. <laughs> we're covering hair today, guys, for those of you who are wondering. So I'm showing you guys how to draw different types of hair from straight hair to this guy to a more curly hair texture like this girl here. Um, and I'm adding in the final steps here to really kind of sell, um, sell kind of the, the, the texture that we got here for this girl. Um, the fish eye zoom, uh, what inspired me to start streaming on Twitch? Um, honestly, I, I didn't have a lot of art friends. That was it. I wanted to stream on Twitch because it was the pandemic and all of my friends were tech bros who didn't really, you know, didn't really do art and stuff like that. And I felt like, I, I don't know, like I wanted to draw with people and just talk about art and, and, and cry together because art sucks because it's sometimes so difficult. <laughs> and that was it. That was my main, main reason of being on Twitch, which actually I'd love to know, guys, put an F in the chat. If you guys have ever tried to draw something, you're like, oh man, you drew something so bad that you were just like, I'm done. I'm, I'm never drawn ever again. I quit. <laughs> you guys ever been there before? Man. I wanted to find kind of people who I could kind of share those experiences with, you know? Yeah, you ever, you ever just draw something so bad that you start questioning why you're an artist in the first place? <laughs> you're like, am I really an artist? Because, uh, yo, yo, you're talented. Keep the good work. Thank you. Thank you. I do. I do try to work hard out here. Um, I do try to work hard. Um, this is what I do for a living. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, there's keep trying to improve and, 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 you know, grow my skills and all of that jazz. But, um, as you guys can see here, um, all I'm doing is again, I'm just adding in those textures, right? I'm, I'm kind of speed running a little bit here. So if I were to do this, like, you know, a little bit slower, um, I would definitely go in and kind of just add a few more, a few more little bells and whistles to really sell the hair. Um, especially kind of like these front locks right here. You want to kind of really add in some nice kind of curly locks there. But for now, we're going to just kind of keep it nice and simple. All right. We're not going to go too in depth here, um, on the hairstyle, just, just enough to kind of give you guys the idea of how I approach, uh, drawing hair like this. Okay. Uh, thank you for the follows. Dino, Dino Mo Art. Uh, can you tell us anything about your work? Uh, sure. Yeah. So I work at, um, I work at the studio that made Castlevania. Um, the studio is called Powerhouse Animation. We do a lot of different types of shows, uh, primarily for uh, Netflix and stuff. And so, um, I work in 2D animation. I've, I, I do a lot of animation stuff. I'll, I do, I do a few character work as well. Um, yeah, um, do a lot of revision works and draw overs. I don't know if there's much else to say. I don't want to give you too much, uh, too much stuff because I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> and, and accidentally say stuff that I shouldn't be saying. Uh, but basically, yeah, I, I work in animation. Um, and so I draw designs and characters based off of that, that kind of style and stuff. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers your questions. But ta-da, there you go. We've got here the textured hair for this girl. Um, you guys can kind of see what I did, right? Nice and easy. Like once you kind of break it down, you're going to be like, yo, Kasem, I get it now. I understand. It all, it all makes sense. 
<laughs> like hair doesn't have to be crazy hard. I think honestly, a lot of art doesn't have to be super difficult. The most difficult thing about, about doing art sometimes I feel like is understanding the logic that went into something, right? Like you guys ever, yeah, you guys ever go on Instagram and you just look at someone's art and you're just like, I got no clue. How did they even do this? And sometimes even after you see how they do it, like you watch a speed paint video, you're still like, how did they do this? You know what I'm talking about guys? And so I think this is why I love to show you guys how I think about it and actually talk about it in real time. Cause I want to show you guys that, you know, like, yeah, it is, it is a bit of work and it takes a bit of practice, but also, um, it doesn't have to be something that's super crazy, right? You can definitely, um, draw some interesting detailed stuff, but you're not jumping in on the details right away. So if I really wanted to, I could actually go on another layer here and, you know, add even more details. But for now, we're going to say this is uh, pretty much good nice and chill for this hairstyle that we have here. All right, but what do you guys think? Huh? Here's here we go. Look, again, bald head. We drew in this structure and I think we did all this in about less than 20 minutes um, while talking with you guys. So, not bad. Not bad at all. If you work on your Netflix, how has the situation been for you uh, where a lot of streaming services are getting rid of animations? Um I've been good. I've been good. Um Powerhouse is one of the few studios that I feel like just pops off and we make really good shows. I mean, if you guys have seen Castlevania, you know, you know. And so because of that, um, we have, uh, you know, we have a pretty good credibility in the animation industry to produce good stuff. And so thankfully, thankfully, uh, we have not had that many issues. Uh, by the way, guys, really quick, I do run ads on my stream every hour and one's going to be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again. Really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you guys after the ad break. Um, so skill. Yeah. There's no people who can draw like gods like that. I know. Um, but okay, cool. So, um, my portfolio. Yeah. Here's my portfolio. You guys can grab it. Uh, it's, it's public, public access. There you go. Um, though there are things that are, that I can't show you guys. Like there, there are stuff that I only show to recruiters and stuff because you know, I have like NDA whatever and stuff, but, um, all the public stuff is there though. It's kind of old. Those are my old, uh, stuff from last year. I haven't updated it at all. I haven't updated it in probably half a year now, so just apologies about that. Um, but all right, cool. Public access. I mean, you can hire me for freelance if you want. Yeah, there are there have been people who um, who have hired me to to do work for them, um, whether freelance work or even some co uh, content stuff. Um, since the '90s, you're insane. You're actually insane. That's super crazy. That's super dope. Um, but okay guys, so here is what we're gonna do today. All right, here's what we're gonna do today. We've knocked out a few of these hairstyles out here. Um, I think we're gonna leave it at this because what I want to do is for the remaining portion of my stream today, um, I want to do some, some art roasts with you guys, some art critiques. And so if you guys want to join in for this art roast and art critique, all you have to do guys is join my discord channel. All right. And on my discord channel, post your art under the art critique section and leave a little comment in a message just to tell me what you might be struggling with or what you might want feedback on. All right. So I'm gonna let you guys do that. There's about, I'm gonna give you guys about two, three minutes to do that. Upload your stuff. Um, and for those of you who are subscribed, post it instead in the sub art critiques section, because I'll be picking from the sub art critique section first. And then from there, um, going the, the remaining ones we're going to do from, uh, the, the, the general section. Okay. So again, guys, make sure you're posting there and yeah. But as for those of you who are watching from YouTube, uh, thank you again for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. All right, there you go. Boom, 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 boom. Ta-da, hairstyles. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna let you guys put it in. Okay, if you guys were in the ad break and you didn't hear what I just said, uh, we're gonna be doing an art roast session right now. So if you want to get your art roasted, you want some feedback on your art, Please, please, please just post it on the Discord channel, guys. Um, it'll be, um, there's a section called Art Critiques, okay? Uh, and that is where you can post your art there. But make sure you leave a description because if you don't leave a message about what you want feedback on and you're just like, KSM, tell me what's wrong, I'm not going to pick it because I, I, I feel like, you know, it's hard for me to tell you what you want to hear and versus what I think you could benefit from. So please leave a message on what you are looking to get improvement on.
Ooh, look at that adding in some colors damn that goes a long way right there musashi thank you so much for the subs wow thank you thank you there you go nice and easy i'm telling you guys um you know drawing doesn't have i mean drawing hair doesn't have to be super complicated you can make it nice and easy and make it a process that is understandable and repeatable um, and flexible, right? Which is the process that I like to cover. But again, there's so many different types of ways to draw hair. So don't feel like this is the only way to draw hair. 